Coping with COVID with Trey Taylor. Updates on the pandemic and information to help you thrive and survive COVID-19. Brought to you by SCDHEC. Visit scdheck.gov for testing and vaccination sites. SCDHEC. Healthy people, healthy communities. In it together, SC and the South Carolina Diabetes Advisory Council presenting Wellness Wednesday every week on Coping with COVID. The City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunities. Helping to meet the needs of small, minority, and women-owned businesses in the City of Columbia. Agape Council and training services. If you're having a challenge coping with COVID, visit Agape Counseling and Training Services at agapects.com. The Comet Bus System, offering free rides to get your COVID vaccine. Don't miss your shot. Visit catchthecomet.gov. Javis Financial Services with over 20 years of experience. Computers unique. Dutch Square Mall. Honest, professional, reliable computer sales and service. Palmetto Media Connections, connecting media and communities together. Coping with COVID from SCD Heck. In it together. SC, the South Carolina Diabetes Advisory Council, the City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunities, Agape Counseling and Training Services, the Comet Bus System, Javis Financial Services, Computers Unique, and Palmetto Media Connections. Coping. Coping with COVID with Trey Taylor. Thank you so much for joining us on Coping with Trey Taylor. I'm Trey Taylor. Don't forget, we are streaming live on the Taylor Made Production page on Facebook. Please go over there, hit like and share and follow. Not only will you be able to get notifications as to when we go live on Wednesday for Wellness Wednesday from In It Together SC and the Diabetes Action Council, but also on Thursday and Friday for Coping with Trey Taylor. Plus, we are streaming live on our YouTube channel. Please go over there and hit the subscribe button so that you can watch all of the great content and information that we've had from the uh, two plus years that we've been doing the show. We also have a presence on Instagram and also on Twitter. Today, we are coping with entertainment. We are coping with this Faith Friday, uh, things that you always wanted to do. And today our guest is Idris Pearson. He's a writer, director, and former Christian hip hop artist and radio host. He's from right here in Columbia, South Carolina. And then now he's CEO of Children of God, COG Entertainment, established back in 2011. He's released many short films. His second one, Forgiveness, was accepted into multiple film festivals. He's going to tell us about that. And he also won Best Director. Congratulations at the Red Hawk Crescent Indie Awards. Idris, thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. First of all, congratulations. You know, I think people don't recognize that there are so many independent film festivals that kind of get you to the larger ones, you know, the, the Emmys, the Oscars, the, you know, all of that. Right. That's correct. It, it is a lot of them and yeah. um, forgiveness just happened to, to touch a touch base with a few of them. Um, and just very grateful for what, what happened with it and, and just doing everything here in Columbia. Yeah. Well, before we get to what forgiveness is all about, tell us how you, even got into filmmaking. Did you always, is this what you always wanted to be when you grew up? <laughs> uh, no, it wasn't. Uh, it's, it's funny. Uh, I started in music. I started in, in, in music as a rap artist. And um, and for years, you know, I had this plan where I'll have like the biggest music out, you know. Right, right. But of course, it doesn't go that way. But um, Well, some about- people it does. Some people it yeah. doesn't. Listen, you know what? I'm going to tell you. I was talking to somebody just today about how, and I'm sure you can attest to this, every step we take gets us to where we're supposed to be. You know, you think this is what I want to do. This is what I want to be. But the creator has different plans, but we got to go through it to get to where we were supposed to be. I I definitely agree. And and this is kind of how I ended it up, ended up where I am now. Uh, Because of course, writing music is is one of the most creative things to get a lot of storytelling out in three, three to four minutes. Um, and we just, I just kind of happened to transition that about nine years ago into film and wrote my first short film, um, Are You In or Out? And ever since then, it's just become a passion and I've just fell in love with it even more over the years. Awesome. Awesome. So, uh, did you grow up enjoying music and the arts? Is that how you got to even becoming a hip hop artist and and being into music and DJing? Definitely. Um, I, I would say music is hereditary. My father was a singer. My mother was a singer. My grandfather was a singer. Oh wow! Um, oh, so you was gonna get the you gonna get bit by the bug some kind of way. Some type of way. So it, it just happened to just bite me a little earlier. Um, I, I've recently kind of retired from music 
over 21 years and it's wow. and it's just been it actually was a great ride i feel like i did i did everything that i wanted to do right. um, in the music area and and now just focusing that same passion into the film yeah so after doing music after doing the radio did acting come before the filmmaking the acting part I I only, I only acted in a few things and it was the, the only the first thing was my my own because uh one of the people that I, I was working with was unable to do it at the time of the filming so I kind of had to step in and I would do it every now and then but my my biggest thing was directing and writing and it's just it's just one of those things where you have to sit back and kind of learn and yeah and take it all in you know get mentors around you get people around you that's going to hold you accountable that's going to teach you exactly what needs to be done yeah idris pearson joins us he's a writer director and former christian hip-hop artist and radio host he is now a filmmaker with a uh, best director award from uh, the Red Hawk Crescent Indie Awards and his uh, latest film, Forgiveness, has been accepted into multiple film festivals. He's been telling us about his journey today. Uh, Idris, you know, you, you also said something again that was just so interesting to me because you had to become an actor because, you know, to, to keep the film going. But again, don't you think that acting made you a better director? It, it did because it taught me what an actor goes through right uh, on the other side yeah right and and I and I attend workshops um, just to understand actors because a lot of times actors they're they're artists you know yeah and we and I, I think people we see them on the big screen we see Denzel we see Samuel we see will and we don't really get what they go through on a daily basis Absolutely. like with with chat with Bozeman he did when he did uh Black Panther he stayed in character the entire time even when he was at home so just understanding how to become another person yeah. and still kind of keep yourself at the same time yeah you know it looks so easy you know when we're on the other side but mm -hmm. people just don't understand uh the pressure the commitment they don't understand the whole thing around the whole entertainment industry and um and and you know people say you know you see the glitz and the glamour you see the end result but you don't see everything it takes to get there so one i applaud you for seeing it and even wanting to continue with it uh, you know really and um and then you know your hard work has really paid off you talked a little bit about mentorship who are some of your mentors? How, where do you find a mentor for what you're doing? Um, it's it's hard. It's actually it's not really as hard as we think. It's a lot of filmmakers in 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 the in the Columbia area. Yeah, um, you're right. I happened to David Pendergrass introducing me to one of my one of my one of my mentors, just Tangi ba Tangi Beatty. Oh, Tangi, yeah, Beatty. Um, and she taught me how to structure a script. She taught me how to cast. She taught me how to see the, see certain things. Uh, and I also have to uh, thank uh, Victoria Glover and Brandon Brandon Glover um, for actually teaching me the around the area of how to do certain things. And recently, I've been working with um, a, a guy from Chicago. He actually lives in Charlotte. His name is Darren DeShazer. Um, and he's taught me the last four years how to really craft uh, as as a director and writer. And and recently, I've actually gotten to the mentorship under the mentorship of Javon Johnson, and he is teaching me even more, especially in the writing portion. Yeah. So, how do you come up with the ideas for your movies? Um, a lot of times, it's just certain personal things that I've gone through in life. Um, and and certain things that I that other people that, that I know that that's going through certain similar things as well, and a lot of times people just ask me about writing something for me. They give me the idea, and, and I just go from there. Yeah, why movies versus plays? Oh man, <laughs> I I actually got to direct my first stage play last year, and it is it is a different yeah <laughs> it's so different. Um, but I chose movies because I love I love to watch I love to sit down and watch movies. Number one, um, and it's it's just 
it's just just something about them where how it how it's put together. Yeah. Um, it, don't get me wrong, stage plays are the same exact way, but with movies, I feel like I have a little bit more control because I on the stage, so. on the stage play, once it says, once we say go, it's yeah, it's out whatever there. Happens, happens. <laughs> it's and no cut. It's no <laughs> editing. It's just out there. It's nothing. And with movies, you know, I can if something is kind of kind of going astray. I can cut and get everybody back together versus if, stage plays. How do you, how would you suggest someone who is interested? And you know, a lot of people are interested in the sh show business. How would you suggest that someone that is interested start in the process, whether they want to be an actor mm -hmm. or or writer director? The biggest thing I would say is just research. Number one, number mm -hmm. one, research, understand, learn to understand the craft, and find someone that's in it. Um, or just or just go out there and do it. But that's that's one of the things that I did. I just went out there and did it, and then eventually I found people to help me along the way. Uh, but I, I I love helping people to to even start. I love helping people to even connect them to someone that can get them to that that where they want to get to. Because even as actors, there's workshops, there's classes that they can take. You know, throughout the state. Um, I know Tanji has a a great acting workshop as well and acting classes. Um, and I, the biggest thing is just find out there's different groups on Facebook that has, you know, that has certain things. And then there's also the South Carolina Film Commission that I'm, yeah. that I'm a part of as well that can can kind of put you in those right in the right direction. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned the South Carolina Film Commission because I think that's a resource that people don't recognize mm -hmm. that is here in South Carolina for those folks who want to do something like this. Several movies, as you know, have mm -hmm. been uh, shot in South Carolina. So mm -hmm. the South Carolina Film Commission is really a great resource for uh, people who may want to get into the business. Idris Pearson is a writer, director, and former Christian hip hop artist. His uh, film Forgiveness has been accepted into multiple film festivals. And uh, today we are talking about his journey. Let's talk a little bit about some of the ups and downs, the bumps, the bruises, the pros and cons that you have experienced, Idris. The, I would say the bump, one of the biggest bumps, of course, everybody knows about the global pandemic. Yeah, um, yeah. But we were in the middle of filming. We actually was on the last weekend, the, the weekend before, well, the weekend when COVID actually hit mm. was the last weekend we were supposed to shoot. Oh, wow. And so we had to pretty much push it back to, I think maybe it's like when things kind of start to die down. Mm -hmm. So um, that, that, that is a major bump. Another thing is, of course, a lot of times as independent filmmakers, we like we we come out of pocket. So, of course, finance is trying to find those different ways to fund the projects. Because we like for me, I want to make sure everyone is is paid for what they do because your your gift is a a, a great thing. And yeah, don't get, me, don't get me wrong; people have done it for us at, at no you know for at no choice no charge. But the biggest thing is, of course, feeding people. <laughs> you know, I'll yeah. feed you. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> You can get a piece of chicken, a chicken yeah. dinner. We we can get some food, um, but uh, those are the, the I, I would say the two major things is and, and just getting the promotion and the recognition um, to to say that you are you know a filmmaker and 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 not being looked down upon because a lot of times people think that Columbia or South Carolina period don't have the talent and a right. lot of people come from South Carolina and have yeah. have it or or paved the way just to get to even other areas. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You mentioned funding. I want to talk a little bit about that because that is oftentimes a big barrier for people. How were you able to get your projects funded? Um, well, the projects that I, I, I worked on, I, I came out of pocket, but um, now I'm learning about more grants. There are a lot of there are a lot of grants out there for um, independent filmmakers or filmmakers in general. Um, that, I, that I'm working on. And I, I, and of course you have the crowdfunding, you know, you have Indiegogo, you have GoFundMe, so you can do all those certain things to, um, to get started. And then, you know, of course um, you can do different fundraisers, of course. Um, and, and those are the, the few things that, that, that I've actually done and, and, and are working on, but uh, for, for the first two, I did mostly out of, out of pocket. 
Okay, Idris uh, Pearson is joining us. He's been uh, sharing with us his uh, filmmaking process. He is a writer, director, former Christian hip hop artist, actor, radio host. His uh, latest film, uh, um, Forgiveness, has been accepted into multiple festivals. Tell us how you get your film into a festival. Um, I and the use, importance of festivals too. The, the importance of festivals are, is that to me they're very important, especially in the short film market, because a lot of times you know people don't get to see the short films, be, or they do see them, it's just cut off at that moment. But those that are in festivals and get to see these short films, it's 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 the ability, the the way where others can look at look at your look at your work and and possibly invest in what you have. Um, so. They're very important, of, of course, networking, getting to meet new people, new producers, new actors, new directors, new writers, uh, just being able to meet new people. That's one. Another thing is that's important in film festival. And uh, uh, again, just having people to see it, to see your project, um, your, your product, because uh, we may do a small premiere here in, in, the, in the city, but then you get it in other cities and people are viewing it from the yeah. screening. That, that helps out a lot as well. Yeah. So what is that process like? Is there a list of festivals that you that you are able to access? Yes, there's a um, filmfreeway.com is where I usually go to, to view all the festivals they have. Um, they have every festival that you can name international and nationally. Um, I actually the first film festival that we were selected was a film festival in Vermont. Uh, which is amazing, you know, to be selected and then get into that final area. Um, the festival I won from the Red Hawk Film uh, Independent Film Festival was in Charlotte. And there was another one in Orlando. I don't want to mess it up, but it's, it was it was another one that, you know, that chose the film. And actually, the actor Rod Lord was actually um, was was in the running for best actor. Oh, so wow. that is just certain things that that just it's just it's just a large a large area and they, they have them from free and to $100 per festival. And I was going to ask you that uh, does it cost to submit? Yes, it does. It, it depends on which one you have. Of course the the more uh, the more mature festivals of course are, are costly because they do have those that are chosen mm -hmm. to go to uh, that are that are SAG eligible, where you right. can actually be chosen in the Oscar and Academy Awards and Emmy area. Um, so there are, like, but you can, there are free ones. There are ones that can cost from fifty to hundred dollars uh, festival. Right. And um, as you, you said, SAG, the Screen, Screen Actors Guild, a lot mm -hmm. of people may not know, um, you know, what SAG means. But mm -hmm. and that obviously means that this 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 festival carries more weight mm -hmm. That's nationally. Correct. Yeah, that is correct. And yeah. of course, there are there, there are thousands of them, actually. And, and we are in the process of just just finding different ones that we can get into and if so they're not chosen or not. Right. So, all right. So you find the festival, you submit, and is it based on what kind of um, film you have produced? Like, do they have some for comedy? Do they have some for, because uh, I have a girlfriend that lives in LA and she does horror films. She's a sister that does horror films. So I know she submits for more horror film kind of stuff, you know, mm -hmm. so there are certain categories, right? Right. There are different categories. Of course, you know, you have like for shorts, just they have the narratives and then they have some where are just for comedy. They have some right. that are just for horror. They have some that are just for drama. Um, it's all about finding the right one that fits right your one. film. Right. And of course, read, reading and um, seeing what is best for you. If it, And if it fits, then of course, submit. Yeah. And then you submit and then you submit, pay your money and then they say you've been accepted. You Correct. Submit, they kind of check it, check it, check it out. That they, 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 it goes through the process of, of course, you submit, you pay your money, um, and then they have judges to judge. However, many fest, many films are in that that that's been going to that festival. Right. It could be hundreds of films, and then you get chosen to it be it be selected to be a part of the festival. Right. And then, then now you're being in the process of being nominated for best short, best feature, gotcha. best, you know, and all those and all those different. 
um, accolades that comes with that festival. Yeah, and like you said, the biggest thing is eyes. All kind of people's mm -hmm. eyes are on you. People that are high up in the industry who could potentially help elevate you and your career. Mm -hmm. and right, exactly. Family. And of course, everybody knows about Sundance. Sundance yeah. is like, it's the biggest festival, big, biggest festival in the states, well, worldwide. And so, when you get to that point, and you know, things can of course happen for you. And that's where we're looking to get to here soon. Yeah, yeah. But it's a process. It's a step. Just like, you know, your whole life, all of our careers have been this way. Idris uh, Pearson joins us. He's a writer, director, former Christian hip hop artist, actor, radio host. And uh, he is CEO of Children of God Entertainment. His short film Forgiveness has been accepted into multiple film festivals. We've been just just been talking about the film festival process. And uh, he actually won Best Director at the Red Hawk Crescent Indie Awards as well. If people um, want to get involved in what you're doing, what do you got coming up, past, present, and, and future? Um, the, uh, um, wow, wow. The, the, <laughs> in the future, the, for the present, we're actually working on a um, period piece uh, that's oh. based in 1945 oh. about a, a soldier coming back home. It's a short film. Um, that's one thing that we're working on. Um, I actually get to work with Miss Sheena Foss here in September. She has a feature film coming up called The Dreamer that she's working on. She actually is doing a um, a uh, okay, a gala to build one hundred thousand dollars to help fund fund her film. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, I'm always writing, and that that's one of the biggest things. I'm actually in the writing class. I had class last night, and it's just just enhancing my craft but yeah. as of right as of right now the period piece is what we're working on um i have another young lady we have another project that she's looking to get started hopefully hopefully done this year um miss stephanie mckinney hopefully we get to work with get this taken care of this year uh, which is her project and 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 then i'm i'm actually working on a feature film hopefully we get get ready to start the pre-production of it um hopefully by the end of this year. Great. And when pe if people want more information about what you're doing or if they want to be involved, and, and I'm sure you're looking for people other than actors too. Are you looking for lighting, sound, crew people? Definitely. We're looking for lighting and, and sound. Um, uh, people that, that cook, caterers, of course, you need caterers to feed these people, mm -hmm. feed people. Um, even just even just hands and feet, just hands, just to help her out, help out around the set. Yeah, crew members. Yeah, and you know, different intern, any any interns that's looking to get started, uh, please please reach out to me, and, and I would love to help you get started. All right, we can see um, Idris' information on the screen. If you want more information, as he said about uh, present and upcoming projects, if you want to information about how to uh, help him with his venture, as he said, whether it's catering or sound and light crew internships, uh, anyone who is a uh, uh, interested in filmmaking, acting, or even in the um, movie or or play business, this would be a great opportunity for you to just kind of hang around and see what's going on because the more information the more experience you get the better so um idris what is the end game for you um i haven't really thought about the end game really? I, I think that i think the next five years is for me right now um it's just being able to get become a, a part of um, the writers guild of america um and also of course releasing more projects um, meeting new people, helping people get to where they want to get to. Mm, I love that. Um, and and just being able to put a, put in a position for my children, if they want to get in this industry, they they're able to have the the contacts for them to work their way in. Right, laying the groundwork. You know, a couple of weeks ago, uh, Anthony Anderson was in Columbia at Black Expo, and he said something to that effect. You know, he was saying his uh, young son, I think he was like a teenager, maybe early 20s, was saying, you know, Dad, I got to put in the work. I got to do the hustle. I got to struggle. And Anthony Anderson said something so interesting. He said, I have made the way so you don't have to struggle so right. hard. You know, not that I don't want you to skate through it, mm -hmm. but utilize what I have worked and sacrificed for you to do. And then when you 
in, when, within your own journey, you can make your way. And because you'll have you'll have struggles anyway, right. you know, during right. your journey. But don't make it harder, you know, right. utilize the opportunities that you have. And that was just so, so interesting um, that he said that. And I thought about that when you said you were laying the groundwork for your sons, but that you also wanted to give other people opportunities. And I think sometimes we make it harder for ourselves and mm -hmm. don't take advantage of things that have happened before us, you know, uh, you, you try to reinvent the wheel and we don't have to, you know, <laughs> that's one of my, that's one of my mentors favorite things is the wheel has already been invented. All you have to do is customize it. Yeah. It's for your own journey, exactly. you know, because I, like I said, it's going to be some challenges anyway. So don't make some challenges that you don't have to make. Definitely. You. And I, I know I, I've done it before, uh, and it's yeah. all the one of the biggest thing that I've learned over this journey itself is having a team. Yeah. Because I was so used to doing everything by myself, and okay. it, it where for number one, it wears you out, it stresses you out, and you're not any good to anyone. To when you're anyone. Tired. <laughs> yeah. So just having people around you, around you to again hold you accountable. That's going to push you. That's going to say you're wrong. That's going to say you're right. That's going to say, nah, I don't think you should do that. All those things matter. And not having a yes man is one of the, the greatest things for me. Yeah. Idris, you said a whole word right there, man. <laughs> that is so important to have people around you who respect you, who share your vision and that are honest, mm -hmm. you know, team members. I know. Um, and, you know, we're going to wrap up in a minute, but that has been what it has been for me. And I just told the amazing team of ladies that I have a privilege to work with just this week at our team meeting that um, I am so grateful for a team. I'm so grateful for a team because I even when this show started two years ago, I was doing it all. I was booking. I was doing the graphics. I was running the board. I was doing it all. And it's hard. I said, it's hard to give it up. It's hard to release these things because it's your baby mm -hmm. but it is so freeing when you do because like you said now you have the bandwidth to do other things that only you can do mm -hmm. you exactly. know it frees you up creatively it exactly exactly and one thing I, I told a client of mine is i understand that you gave birth to this baby but i'm going to be here to nurture it and yeah. make sure it gets to where it needs to go to yeah. and as a director, I have to put people in place and read a script and analyze a script and understand that a, no character has to be a favorite. Every character is a favorite character to me. Yeah. I don't look at a script and say, oh, this is my favorite character because I can't because I would put more focus on that. So just being able to nurture someone's someone's creativity and someone's vision and, and then push it and they see and we all see it through the end. And they see it and they're happy with it and, and, you know, they're smiling or crying. And those are the type, though, that's the feeling that I get. And I love it because it, it, it lets me know that I did a job done. Well, awesome. good. Well, Absolutely. Absolutely. And you've been there, good team member. You've been to them what mm -hmm. someone else has been to you. Thank yeah. You. Idris Pearson, thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget to uh, check out his YouTube channel. You can see that information on the screen. Uh, check out all of his, uh, like I said, past, present, and present um, projects that he's done and keep your ears and eyes open for more from writer and director Idris Pearson. Idris, thank you so much for joining us today on Coping with Trey Taylor. Good luck to you, man. God thank bless. You. And congratulations in advance. Thank you so much. Thank you again for having me. Absolutely. Major Thomas is one of the top real estate agents in his region, but lost everything due to a major accident. I got this. You know I can do this, I don't this, um... want you to do nothing for me, all right? Lord, did I miss? Got as soon as I get my legs straight back, I'm out, all right? And you and your God, they have this place to yourself. Baby, what are you doing here? Claiming what's mine. So what's yours? This time, you got a coach. Not only no coach, I'm, I'm the coach. You know what coach I'm talking about. The one that sits high and looks low. It was awkward, I don't know.
trust in me. But my life is so cute. I had a good time too. You're a pretty funny guy. I'm never giving up on you. No, I won't let go. Hello, I'm Carolyn Sawyer, an entrepreneur and caregiver. Part of taking care of your health is knowing if you're at risk of type 2 diabetes. Pre-diabetes is serious and puts you at risk for developing type 2 diabetes. Up to 90% of South Carolinians who have it don't know they have it. Visit inittogethersc.org. Take an online test to find out your risk and join a diabetes prevention program. This message brought to you by the Diabetes Action Council of SC. Computers, they're a part of our everyday life, but when they're not working, they're an everyday problem. So call Computers Unique, your everyday solution. 803-351-5821. Is your computer running slow, won't turn on? Do you need a screen replaced? Or maybe you just need another computer? Well, Computers Unique is your one-stop shop for all your computer needs. They have a wide variety of new and pre-owned PCs, Macs, and tablets. So call Computers Unique, Dutch Square Mall. 803-351-5821. 803-351. Hi, I'm Mr. Deputy Addy Perez with the Richland County Sheriff's Department Community Action Team. As a mother, I know it's important to take care of my health for those I care about. Part of doing that is knowing my risk for developing type 2 diabetes. So if I was you, I'd take the opportunity to visit inittogethersc.org and take an online test to find out if you have prediabetes. Again, the website is inittogethersc.org. This message is brought to you by the Diabetes Action Council of South Carolina. Thank you so much for joining us for the award-winning Coping with COVID and Coping with Trey Taylor. I'm Trey Taylor. Listen, if you have a story or initiative that could help someone cope or cope with COVID, please email booking at copingwithtraytaylor.com. If you have a product or service that could help someone cope or cope with COVID, please email copingwithtraytaylor at gmail.com. We would love for you to be a proud sponsor, just like In It Together SC and the Diabetes Action Council. They sponsor Wellness Wednesday every Wednesday here on Coping with COVID. Our other sponsors include Computers Unique, Dutch Square Mall, Palmetto Media Connections, the Comet Bus System, Agape Counseling and Training Services, and Black Pages, Black Expo. Listen, as always, we leave you with a reading. We've been reading this year, Conversations with God from Cheryl Mims Williams. This is a great book that includes some of her journal writings and some of her, um, some scriptural readings. This chapter is called Thank You. And I'm just going to read some things that we can thank God for just throughout the day. Thank you for your strength in Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Thank you for opening my heart and mind to your word. Thank you for listening ears that I might hear every word you speak. Thank you for clarity on my mission, my ministry, and my calling. Thank you for making my load and burden lighter. Thank you because you have fallen and doesn't mean that you are a failure. These are things we can just thank God for throughout the day. Have you ever thought about just taking the time, maybe once an hour, starting the hour with, God, I thank you for dot, 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 whatever. That'll make your day go so much better. You make our day here at uh, Coping and Taylor May Productions so much better. We appreciate you watching and for listening and for supporting and for commenting and for liking and for posting and for sharing. We appreciate you. All right. Until the next time, I wish you peace and abundant blessings. Take care. God bless. Stay well. And don't forget to wear your mask over your nose and under your chin. We'll see you soon. Learning what you can do Six ways to a better you